This is my heavily modified Soval Zero. It's a fully open source 3D printer that comes ready to go out of the box. It gets a lot of its design inspiration and DNA from the Voron Zero, but this is an open source design group and you have to build this printer yourself. You can buy a kit that comes with all the parts, but the assembly comes down to you actually building every part of this machine. This gets you a ready to go printer out of the box. For me, a big appeal to the Voron is how personal it is after you're done. There's all these custom mods that I've done to this. Even just simple things like selecting the colors makes this a unique printer different from everyone else's. But the Soval out of the box looks like everyone else's Soval, so I had to fully change it. Luckily, it is fully open source, so there are some really easy to mods that you can do right off the bat. For all these blue parts on the side here, I use Bamboo Labs Matte Plum PLA. Since they are all external and decorative, I did use PLA here because it's not going to be on the inside. The things that I did print on the inside, I did use ABS because it can get quite hot inside the inside of this chamber. Since it is open source, you're given more than just the STLs. These are the full step files, so you can take them into your CAD program and really modify them really easily. They're easy to print out and an easy way to add a lot of customization to your printer. The next big upgrade was painting these panels. It is pretty easily the side and back panels. They just come off with a handful of screws. And then I used some high temperature paint to make it white. I really like the white interior. As you can see on my Voron, it makes it really easy to see in there. It was kind of a difficult process taping over all of the motion systems. And then uh, there are a lot of holes on this back panel that open up into the electronics bay in the back. So I did have to take some of the electronics off or put masking tape behind the electronics back there. That was kind of a ordeal to do, but it still I think was a lot easier than tr fully disassembling the printer and painting those parts. I did use some hot glue on the screws of the base here. That way after I pulled the hot glue off, the screws are still usable. Another easy mod was adding the spool holder to the side here. This is just a simple thing that screws in there. And instead of on the stock printer, the spool is mounted on the back, which is kind of difficult to reach around to the back. It's just a simple little thing that makes it really easy to use. The next big upgrade was adding these LED lights. I went for addressable RGB LEDs, so it's 51 addressable lights that are fully customizable. It's clipper, so it's really easy to add in some fun macros. I set up one simple macro that I can run that'll show you the progress of the nozzle heating up and a lot of fun things you can do with fully addressable RGB LEDs. You could go for single color white LEDs. It already has the connector here. Since it does use a PCB of a few LEDs, you could really easily upgrade this to a long strand of a lot of LEDs. These are 24 volt LEDs because the whole system is running 24 volts. For addressable RGB LEDs, you're gonna want five volts. And there are two different connectors on the main board. So there's really a ton of possibilities when it comes to expanding the lights of this printer. I will link some of the STLs that I used here and the GitHub sources for those macros in the description down below if you're interested in using these mods for your printer. Now I think we should talk about the base specs of this printer and some of the nice features here that are upgrades over your base Voron. Well, base Voron is kind of a vague term. I will say upgrades over my Voron because a Voron isn't one defined thing. It's whatever you want to put in your printer. And there are a few things I wish this printer had, but this came with it out of the box. So first up, the build volume is 150 millimeters in all dimensions. It's actually exactly six inches but around 150 millimeters. The rated maximum speed is 1200 millimeters per second and 40,000 millimeters per second squared. That is huge speed and acceleration. You're probably not gonna be printing at those speeds. These small printers are great at running high speed little tests and tinkering with your firmware. And so it's really awesome that it can handle those. It's got linear rails on all of the axes and two lead screws on the Z. There is only one motor driving those Z screws, but a belt down underneath that ties those two screws together. It can be fully enclosed. It comes with a door and top piece of glass, but I took them off when I was doing all the painting and I just haven't put them back on. Since I mostly print PLA anyways, it's not something I really use. So I might even take off these side panels. If I'm just printing PLA, I just don't really need them here. But the nozzle can reach a maximum of 350 Celsius and the bed can reach 120 Celsius. So it can print those high temperature filaments if you really want to. It is an interesting choice that they chose to use an AC powered bed. So it will heat up very quickly, but it is a little bit more on the dangerous side because there is mains 120 volts, at least here in the US, running all the way to the bed. It is the Z-axis on a Core XY system, so the cable chain isn't getting too much wear and tear on there, but it is something to be aware of 
five or six years down the road after you've been using it to just keep an eye on that cable chain and make sure it's not wearing out. A really nice feature this does have is eddy current sensing. So doing the Z offset uses a pressure sensor to measure your Z offset and then uses a electromagnetic eddy current sensor to quickly scan the build volume area. And it does only scan the area that you're printing in to get a really high detail map. This is a really small bed, so it's not the most useful thing here, but it is still really cool and I love that they put it on here. But it still uses a pressure sensor to measure that Z offset. So if you change nozzles or do any other weird mods with your printer, it still physically measures that Z offset between the bed and the nozzle. It comes with a camera built in at a really great angle to be able to monitor your prints remotely. It's got a chamber filter in there, a chamber temperature sensor, external Wi-Fi antenna, and a large auxiliary fan mounted on the back to really cool off your prints. And one thing Soval really gets right here is that it uses open source Orca Slicer as its default slicer here. So many companies out there have their own skinned version of Orca Slicer. This just uses the mainline Orca so you get all the latest updates and features ready to go with this printer. So when it comes to print quality, it can print really good. So here's a simple vase mode print showing in silk PLA, just the quality that this printer can create. Then onto a few different benchies I printed. These two are the sub nine minute benchies and it does show the difference in different PLAs here. This purple one is with a matte PLA by Bamboo Lab, just a standard PLA versus this is a hyper PLA designed to have some better flow rates. And it does, I think, have better print quality here. But I do love a small printer like this for being able to test out different filaments and seeing the comparisons and differences between them. Since the printer can really handle high speeds, you're then able to test the filaments, I think, a lot better. I did print a normal Benchy using their normal print profile. This is American filaments. I think they call it hot pink was the base color and it turned out great. This printer has surprisingly won me over. I came into it really skeptical. I love my Voron largely because it's my Voron that I've done so much to. It felt like Soval's Voron, not mine. And it really was just some simple modifications, taking off these blue parts and printing my own purple parts, taking off these panels and just painting them, adding some RGB LEDs. All of these mods that I did were really quite easy. It takes some time and thought to think of what colors you wanna use, which parts you want to change and which parts you want to leave the same. I wouldn't say I'm as connected to the Soval as I am to my Voron because this one I spent like 40 hours building and probably easily more than 40 hours more with all the tinkering and tuning before I could even get it printing well. This thing prints well right out of the box and I've been doing all the fun mods to it now. So what are the downsides of this printer? The build volume is the biggest one. It is kind of small there so I wouldn't recommend this as someone's only printer because that is kind of limiting especially at the price point. The second one is the price point here. Again, it is a very good upgraded Voron, I would say. You're getting a bigger build volume, you're getting the camera, you're getting the eddy current sensor, the giant fan in the back, the filter inside there, the screen. My Voron doesn't even have a screen on here because I didn't put one on here. So I think the price point works for the quality of parts that they put in here. But if you are shopping for a printer in price per build volume, this is not a great printer to look at. Another downside is that the fans are a bit loud here. It comes with really powerful fans and powerful fans are loud fans. So you could go in here and either modify them, physically swap them out for quieter fans, or in the software, I think tuning them down a little bit so they don't max out at 100%. If you max them at around 80%, you'll save a lot of volume with this printer. The software here is open source, but it's not using the mainline source clipper it is using a Soval branch of Clipper. You can take it over to the main line of Clipper, and I have seen some tutorials online for how to do that with other Soval printers. I just haven't done it with this printer yet. So if you really wanna unlock the software side of things, that would be a very useful mod to go down that path. But you do lose some of the warranty support if you take on loading your own firmware here, because that's where you could start breaking things if you start tinkering with firmware. Clipper is something pretty easy to learn, and this is a great way to get started. So would I recommend the Soval Zero if you're seriously looking at this printer right now? Yeah, I think it is everything it sets out to do. It's an open source 
easy to use, really quality printer with a lot of nice upgraded features from the base Voron. But anyway, that just about wraps it up. Let me know if you have any more questions about the mods I did here. I did do one short kind of covering the overview, and I think I will cover more of the detailed mods in shorts in the future and other mods that I plan to keep doing on here. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. Go out there, create something amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.